everywhere I go Tell the world, tell them Yeah, I'm a billboard Tell the world, tell them I'm broadcasting like a radio Tell the world, you ought to know I'm brand new Hello again, everybody, and thank you for joining us on FBS Fireside, the place where we bring men to life by bringing life to men. And I'm so excited about this show this week. Man, I got Tally back in the studio. Tally, what's up, man? How you doing? Hey, man, I'm doing super duper, as they say. Excited to be here, and I look forward to today's show. Yeah, we have a special guest on the show today. We have Worldwide Willard, my dear friend and brother. He's a coach. He's a husband. He's a father. He's a mentor. And he's an extraordinary relationship coach. And But he's on the show today to tell us more about uh, his dealings at being an amazing father. You know, he coaches basketball. He's just got a lot of accolades and, and a bunch of uh, experience training and building men not only his own sons but other people's sons worldwide will welcome to the show today man so good to have you hey thank you thank you i'm doing well glad to be here uh let's get it worldwide worldwide fantastic tally can you do us all a favor and open us up in a word of prayer uh, without a doubt. Father God, we're just so grateful to be in this place. We thank you, God, for your presence amongst men. Your word says how good and pleasant for men to dwell together in unity. So we're thankful they were able to come together and begin to just uh, express how good you are and the plan you have for men to excel in every area of their lives. So we give this show to you and we pray edify others. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. amen amen thank you so much and you know i gotta put you guys on the spot tell you know we do this during the week we do it on the weekends i call you guys about the blue we have these quick word workouts let's uh invite our listeners into a quick word workout and i'll start tighten it up tighten up uh my father has a house with many mansions and jesus well <laughs> oh here we go again <laughs> The Lord is our shepherd. I shall not want. Oh, boy. Be anxious for nothing. Want for nothing. But through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Then the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. <laughs> <laughs> all right man fantastic fantastic last week i had my son on the show oh wait let me go back for our listeners okay so what we do is basically we'll call each other up out of the blue and we have to recite some scriptures to kind of pull us out of the worldly uh chores challenges trials that we may be facing and plug us into god so that's what that's all about last week we had my son on the show and and i kind of cheated guys because one of the scriptures he reminded me of was our father has a house with many mansions. And so this week's show, I really like to dig into access, you know, a father's ability to help his child gain access to resources they can't gain on their own, which is why we have Worldwide Willard on the show today. So Worldwide, I'd love for you to share some of your experiences with our listeners about you and your dealings as a father with your sons. Uh, sure. Um, I have some dynamic sons, talented, um, and even though they're talented, it's up for me. It's up to me to run point in their lives. Point guard. Uh, I like sports. I'm a former college athlete, so setting them up for uh, easy shots, setting them up for layups, setting them up for open shots. That's my job in their lives. So uh, that's what I've been working on. That's what I'm able to do. That's what I'm still growing in. You know, when you said that, what comes to mind is this because. Um, as a father, right, you know, when you said that point guard position, I know for me, having two sons of my own, uh, I had to begin to kind of reevaluate my playbook and make sure mm -hmm. that I realized that when I was a young father and now I'm older, how my role begins to shift to empower my sons, right? We, right. we, we build them up in the beginning and then we got to empower them to uh, duplicate what we're doing. And so that comes to mind for me. So I think that's a great analogy. And I thank you for sharing because it does uh, give me some enlightenment on my role as a father. Yeah, I really love that metaphor, too, because if you think about access, you want to as a point guard, you want to be able to give the other players access to that stat line. And truthfully, you know, if you sometimes you'll have players on the team who got to catch the ball right there on the number. Some players can right. catch it regardless of where you throw it around them. 
Uh, but I think as a father, it's important to know who you're working with because I have two sons and, and they both catch the ball totally differently. You know? oh, right. So, <laughs> so I really appreciate that um, metaphor that you use. So can you give us a real world example of something that may have happened to you recently with you and your son? Uh, sure. Um, he's a basketball player. Um, and he's being recruited by uh, Dartmouth University or Dartmouth College, rather. A um, couple other universities, but he doesn't necessarily get the the exposure that he should get. So, therefore, I have to be intentional on helping him diversify his presence, even online, on how to get that exposure. So, uh, recently, we just did a website for him personally, um, he just launched uh, his own apparel brand, Prep Rep, um, which actually advertises for school. So all those things will help his, uh, his overall footprint and platform to be vital. So the more things that he create, his talents and be successful all the way around. You know, when you said that, Willard, you know, for me, I think. I think about DNA, you know, Jaworski, part of one of our FBS platforms is talking about DNA. And I've been hearing the word, um, you know, we have DNA, destiny needs activation, destiny needs um, awareness, you know, destiny needs access. And so when a father kind of can understand that his job is to create a, to, to create awareness that his son has power to create, uh, activate that power and then to give him access to utilize it. Uh, I think though that formula of success is the key for all of us as fathers. And we encourage other men to recognize that that DNA uh, principle can help revolutionize your household. And also anybody you come in contact with, whether it be your own son or your own children does not matter. Right. I think also we were talking about, you know, growing things. We talked about it previously about just planting food and things like that. You have to be intentional with this. It has to be on purpose because just being around as a father in presence and it just presence is not good enough. You have to be intentional in terms of just like you have a business meeting. We have business meetings. We talk about goals and milestones, putting them down, checking them off. And your success is not going to happen. Um, whatever whatever you're doing, even your walk with Christ is not going to happen by osmosis. It will happen when you give time to those things specifically and be intentional with it. Yeah, that's great. I'm so glad that you shared that being intentional about fathering because there are statistics that not only talk about fathers who are absent, but fathers who are present and just to not intentional and fully awake and involved in their children's lives. They're just right. not plugged in. And and that's right. a, I think that's a great segue into our first song. Uh, Willa, thank you for sharing this song with us. It's Lecrae's Plugged In, and we'll be right back. I got a real plug, never let me down. Always come through when I need it, never been a drop. Told my daughters count me in, they couldn't count me out. They tried to take me down with them, took a different route. I'm plugged in, I'm plugged in, I'm plugged in, I'm plugged in. I got a real plug, yeah. they never let me down. Yeah. Always come through when yeah. I need it, never Ooh. been a drop. Woke up early Sunday, and we're back. You know, when I when I think about a song like that, you know. Um, being plugged in is just like the one part of that thing aware of being aware. But I think the key that comes to me is that you can plug in a radio, but it's not until you turn it on, right? It's not until it's actually functioning that you realize how much power it has access to. So I, I love the thoughts of how we got to not only plug our kids into the world, we got to plug in and we got to turn on. We, you know what I mean? We got to be fully right. engaged in the work of fathering. Because right. just plugged into a family in these days is not enough. We got to be all the way turned up and ready to um, to act and be an example. Right. You got to be relatable, too. Um, you know, there's a disparity between generations. I think these generations are closer because sometimes we listen to the same things or we enjoy the same things. And one of the slang terms everybody uses now is the plug. Now, sometimes it can have a, a bad connotation, but sometimes it can have a good connotation in terms of Who's the person you go to that has, say, the hookup on basketball tickets or 
tennis shoes or things of that nature. Like everybody wants a plug, which basically is access to things that other people they can't get. So you got to be relatable as well um, with, with your kids so they can understand there's nothing new under the sun. We're not out of touch. We're basically giving you the blueprint based on our lives. So uh, when I think of plugged in, I think of also that, that access through the plug, that person that has that VIP list that you can get on and we can put our kids on. And like, like we discussed earlier, that our kids can put us on. It just, it, it just goes back and forth because as we're being a father, we're teaching them. They're teaching us as well. Yeah, you know, as I sit here and listen to y'all talk about this, I, I'm hearing in the spirit of um, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond anything we could ask or imagine according to the power that works in us. And when we plug into our children, when we actually plug into uh, God, uh, we're plugging into power that otherwise wouldn't be available to us. You know, destiny definitely needs activation. Destiny definitely needs access. And being relatable, will it, like you said, allows us to plug into parts of the DNA in our sons and daughters that are waiting for us as fathers to, to activate, really. And then it'll help us to relate. It'll help them to relate to God better. You know, and I'm glad you brought that up. You know, like Will it brought about his real life example uh, here recently. Uh, me and my son went on a boating trip with our neighbor and it was amazing because, you know, a lot of times, you know, you got boys and, and their aspiration, Hey, I can't wait to get my first car. I got one son. Listen, he doesn't want a first car. He wants the first boat. And mm. my neighbor, uh, through relationship, you know, not only do we have to be relatable, but we have to be willing to build relationships to, um, to create bridges through other cultures. And it is what happened to be my, my neighbor being a, a Caucasian male with, through our relationship, he reached out to me and said, Hey, wanna, you know, you and your boy want to come boating. And the reality of it is it was a great experience. And because of my, you know, as a father, you have to be humble enough to allow other men to uh, help cultivate, engage the word says some plants, some water, but God gives the increase. So uh, when I think about all of that, I just think how we must continue to work together to help our sons also uh, remain coachable and be coached by others. Right. Uh, since you said the word coach, it just brings me to how different my sons are. Um, as a great coach, you, you have to know your personnel. Some, co some kids can be coached hard. Some need a lot of encouragement. And you got to be able to manage them the right way. I have one. I can kind of get on and be tough and be kind of, you know, I can build them up and break them down and he's going to react. Ironically, my oldest one, I have to I have to approach him in a, in a total different way because uh, he's actually um, not my son by my wife, but a previous relationship. So that whole dynamic has been something that has been really, really tough. But now he's older. He's 23 and he's an adult. And we have these once a, once a week meetings at my office where we talk business, where I get to you know kind of know what's going on with him. He knows what's going on with me. And it's very enlightening. It's a whole different stage of coaching. You know what I mean? Because I coach, mm -hmm. but I, I'm not too authoritative in that coaching because he's grown. So I got to even give him that, that male, that man respect, even though to me, he's always my little, my little boy, my little guy. So uh, knowing our personnel and being, and that goes back to being intentional because none of this happens if, if we're not doing the study and we got to, we got a plan, you know, Tally, as a teacher, if you don't do the lesson plan, you really can't teach the way you want to teach. Of course, you can go off the top of your head, but it's different when you plan thoroughly. So um, even just researching our sons or our daughters and knowing how they want to or need to be coached is very important as well. So thank you for that, that coaching uh, term. I love the, how, the segue in the sports all the time. Yeah, and I appreciate you and your, your honesty about coaching need, needing to know their personnel I have failed miserably in that department when it comes to my son my sons because they too are the same you know they just they require a different level of motivation different level of inspiration different mechanisms right. different ways to get them to move and I was just um, I, I just failed miserably in that department um, but look we need to take another quick break and, and play another amazing song that I hope is inspirational to our listeners we're going to uh, listen to Father Knows Best by Kirk Franklin we'll be right back after this 
See, it's important to understand that just because God allows things that may not be good to us does not mean that it's not good for us. <laughs> yeah. See, a parent fails if the child never learns how to fly. I hope I'm talking to somebody today. And we're back. You know, when I think about that kind of song, Father Knows Best, man, I'm telling you, I'm reminded of the scripture that talks about how, you know, our, our younger men should be, you know, submissive or should be humble to the elders. But here's the same thing. We also, as fathers, have to remain humble to our heavenly father, right? Our father with art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So sometimes, you know, as much as we would like to think that we're the final authority on certain matters when it comes to raising our children, we still got to remember that father knows best, our father. So sometimes we have to be slow to speak, right, quick to hear, and slow to wrath. Because the challenge becomes when we engage our sons and we don't get the feedback or the response that we we think we deserve or desire, or and then all of a sudden we get frustrated. And then I've now I've many times I've kind of backtracked in my coaching abilities because I've now jumped the gun on something I should have waited to hear from my heavenly father on. Right. It, it brings me back to when I, I taught in the classroom for twelve years as well. And um I didn't even teach curriculum at the beginning of class. I usually just gave them me, let them understand who I am and let them see some of my flaws and my struggles as a person. And they were able to relate to me because I gave them me. So as, as a father, I do the same thing. I'm transparent and I let them know, okay, I'm struggling with this right now. I might need your help right now. Um, let's go to God together. Let's go to God because I need the same thing that I'm telling you that you need. You know what I mean? And that honesty and that transparency has is, is something that I want them to give to their children. You know what I'm saying? They they understand that, oh, he's a straight up guy. He's an honest guy. He might be tough, but at the same time, I, I know him intimately the way the way that, you know, our father wants to know us intimately. So I think being transparent and honest, you know, with with, with our kids as well, with our sons, especially um, it is going to help them be be fathers, the fathers that we would want them to be, and hopefully that we are ourselves. Yeah, and I, I appreciate you for sharing that, Willie, because that's that's great advice for all of our listeners out there. I know many of us because this epidemic of fatherlessness is not a new thing. So what often happens is we find ourselves angry, we find ourselves upset, disappointed, frustrated, and and the relationship that we could potentially have with our Heavenly Father is kind of skewed because of the lack of relationship we did not have with our fathers. Fortunately for you and Tally, it sounds like you guys have cultivated amazing relationships with God that you can transfer to your children. But uh, men I, and me, I know I, I can speak from a, a personal point of view. I, I just haven't done as good of a job as a father as I could being more compassionate, being more understanding, being more, being less authoritative and a little bit more um, caring and nurturing to my children uh, because my dad wasn't around. So I had a, a bit of a, a, a bit of shell that I had to kind of crack through in order to do the things that you guys are suggesting. But I hope our listeners are, are gaining some valuable insight into ways that they can become better fathers for their children. Yeah, and I, I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there, Jaworski. This is something that's very important. Hey, guys, uh, I did have, you know, we all have commonalities because we all have sons. I mean, my, my sons are 19 and 18. I know Jaworski, yours is around the same age. You know, Will it the same thing. And, you know, what helped me during a very challenging time, and it's come up different times where, you know, I, verbal, uh, verbally, we can't always just get the words out to our son without giving a certain level of emotion with it because we care about him so much. And then right. I was reminded of the book of Proverbs, right? And I'm like, you know, here this King Solomon. Solomon's writing a letter to his son. And so um, I wanna, I'm going to share this with you guys, and, you know, hopefully you can hear a little bit of it. But I'm going to just say this part to you, it's, and um, you let me know if it makes sense. I, I wrote a letter to my son a couple of years ago, and as I said, lately I've been struggling to communicate with you because I've allowed some thoughts to get buried in my mind. So I'm taking a step of faith and sharing my heart to you so you know how it feels towards you. At this point, my main goal 
is to help you in these different areas of your life, spiritually, professionally, and personally. And, uh, you know, it was about a two page letter I wrote to my son. And it, once I got done, I felt so much better, but practically speaking, I felt that I, I actually, you know, penetrated, you know, he heard what I had to say, even though I wrote it and didn't verbalize it. And so I just wanted to put it out there for men out there, you know, start with a letter. If you can't, you know, have that face to face contact with your son, I know zoom and all that stuff, but a good old fashioned, get the words out your head and get it on paper is not a, a bad place to start to help facilitate that connection. That's the, that's the key, uh, Tally. Uh, Jaworski, you are not by yourself when it comes to, um, where you feel like you failed in terms of the the great father you want it to be. Cause I do, it's an ebb and flow. It's the ups and downs. But like Tally, right. Tally just said, um, just going back and explaining yourself, going back and let them know how you really feel. And I know it is tough for some men, but it's going to do so much more. I unlock so many doors for your son or for your children. When you're able to say, you know what? I'm sorry, man. You know what? I went off on you, but this is why I went off on you. I see so much potential in you. I love you. I don't want you to to make the same mistakes I did because in our DNA, a lot of times, you, especially when you see your son or your daughter do something that you know you did yourself, you're like, wait, wait, no, no, not that, not that, not that, because I know I did that. I know you got that honest. So it's like that might set you off even more, but got to come back, man, and apologize and let them know that your ego is not so big that you can't be a father that you can't still be loving that you can't still be nurturing even after taking them the task about something not not necessarily saying uh what i said was wrong but how i said it you know i could have said it a better way but this is why i was emotional about it and i'm sorry for it and come come give me a hug and, it, and it's okay even at 18 even at 17 i do that to this day so don't be afraid to do that it was fun. Yeah, one of the things that I heard you uh, say in that will it is uh, an apology. What I heard in the spirit was repent and turn to God so that your sins might be wiped away and times of refreshing may come from the Lord. And I'm just thankful, man, that you took time out of your busy schedule to come on the show. Thank you guys both for sharing your heart and, and soul. And I'm hoping that this episode, along with all of the other episodes, helps lead men into the truth. Sure that's available for them to um, see God better and lead their families to God. Anybody want to close us out in prayer before we go to our last song? I guess I, I would take that. Uh, it was for well, you. <laughs> I received I received it. Thank you for that pass. Uh, Lord, we just thank you right now for health, wealth, and success, God. We thank you right now for all the men that are listening, all the fathers that you want to bring up in your kingdom to be like you, Lord. So we thank you. We empower you. We empower them. We pray that you touch them in a way they had never been touched before, and that they'll be able to be great fathers. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you to all of our listeners for joining us. We're going to close today's show with a wonderful song called No Longer Slaves by Zach Williams. Take care and we'll see you back here next week on FBS Fireside. I'm no longer